Uh, uh, so I'm going to talk for 20 minutes and then throw up uh, questions which actually overlap with, um, uh, with Collins. Um, so, um, my themes are uh, that we are now seeing open coming. Open is uh, on everybody's lips. It's coming from governments, funders, and so on. And much of the uh, web community, some of it scientific, some of it uh, otherwise, is actually practicing open. And so I want to suggest what we should do for open crystallography. Um, and I'm going to, in particular, uh, show... Oh, where's the... Uh, show what um, uh, a few of us have done with um, uh, the, open, uh, the crystallography open database and uh, crystalline. Uh, so, I first of all owe a huge debt to IUCR, uh, which I've been very proud to be a member of, and I think they are uh, quite simply the best semantic scientific publishers of the current century. Uh, they've done everything right, they've done it steadily, uh, and um, Many people in the room have contributed to this. And you do not realize how awful it is in other disciplines. If you go to chemistry, there is nothing of what we have in this community. And if you go to material science and computational chemistry, it's even worse. Computational chemistry, I believe, probably uh, uses about $1,000 uh, $1, million a year in uh, funding, and they publish zero in terms of data. It's as simple as that. Uh, so we are a, uh, we should be a model to the rest of the world. And um, last year we had a symposium which I organized in Cambridge uh, to look at semantic uh, science uh, in the physical sciences. Uh, and here is Brian, and Brian is very much uh, the sort of person that we hope the um, uh, uh, physical sciences might rally around. So I'm going to say a bit about the semantic web. I've been inspired by the semantic web, which of course came out of science. It came out of CERN, uh, and it was meant uh, as something which scientists should use in uh, high energy physics. And it's ironic that actually science is one of the later disciplines uh, to pick up the semantic web. Far more has been done with government, NGOs, and so on uh, than in uh, many areas of science. This is um, the linked open data cloud of the world, uh, and um, it covers a huge number of different uh, disciplines. So government, music, art, literature, and all of this stuff is out there linked uh, by a technology called um, RDF uh, up here, and uh, people are coming into this literally every day. There's a large chunk of uh, bioscience here, uh, and Here's the PDB, uh, so we do have crystallography in that, but there's very, very little physical science, and there's no fundamental crystallography in uh, the linked open data of the world. And uh, there should be, uh, and perhaps that's one reason why we may not be as well known uh, as we should be outside uh, some of our uh, communities. So... Uh, this is being pulled together by things like DBpedia, which is a semantic version of Wikipedia. It's extremely powerful and it will become, uh, you know, the knowledge base of choice for many people. So here are two questions which look, uh, at the first instance, unanswerable, but actually are fairly trivial to take the information from Wikipedia and bind together uh, into um, an RDF question, so-called Sparkle, uh, and answer them. And I've put one here, which I would like to answer. Uh, which countries are doing crystallography which relates to tropical disease? And that's a question of simply taking the SIFs, getting the authors out, linking the authors to their establishments, linking the establishments uh, to the countries, and linking the countries uh, to uh, endemic diseases. And all of the information is in Wikipedia apart from uh, the, um, uh, the publications themselves. So it's not uh, a huge leap of faith to see that we can start doing. And that's the sort of question which then links into organizations such as the World Bank, which is now uh, very keen on funding open activities across the world. Um, going beyond that, uh, Another aspect of the um, semantic web is it can be used by machines. So uh, the, we do things all the time which machines could actually do better. And I've given an example here that 
uh, I'm uh, helping to build the workflows for, which is to pull crystal structures out of the literature, uh, to compute them uh, with uh, programs such as NWChem for PNNL, uh, and uh, then to distribute the results. And that could be done on a large scale automatically uh, if we tie the semantics together. There is no need in many areas for humans uh, to be pulling things together and so forth uh, if everything is in semantic form. Um, short timeline, uh, I've been inspired by CONSIFS and I've been inspired by uh, Tim Berners-Lee at the World Wide Web Conference and I've spent really the last 20 years trying to get this into chemistry and material science and it's been incredibly slow going. Uh, chemists do not seem to be interested in um, making their uh, data machine processable and making their data available, even though they publish it. So it's common for people to take a spectrometer that produces um, digital output, uh, uh, probably you know, some megabytes, and then print it out on a piece of paper and fax it through to the journal, where it is then published as the scientific record of that. And uh, there's no indication that it's changing. So uh, I've uh, got into the area of um, computational materials. Um, that came up at this meeting and also I spent some uh, time this uh, winter down in Melbourne uh, with Nico Adams where we've been looking at can we build a material science informatics and that is really 100% inspired by SIF. I'm saying to these communities, look, the crystallographer's done it what you need to do is you need to build dictionaries. The key thing is dictionaries. And so we're trying to get this uh, at, you know, into the uh, idea of the community that what they need to do is build dictionaries. At the moment, they have no dictionaries. They have no formats. They have nothing. You know. uh, they just um, type some things up in Word and put it into their paper. So open. Uh, jump up when I'm coming close to the 20 minutes. Um, and... Um, so open is critical. I'm uh, proud to be part of the Open Knowledge Foundation and this is a very clean definition. A piece of data or content is open. Anybody can use it, reuse it and redistribute it subject only possibly to acknowledgement. Now, uh, we do that with our open source software. If you have open source software, it fits this definition. And I've listed here some things which are open. PDB is open. Uh, COD and Crystal I, as I say, will be open. The SIFs on uh, various publications are open. Um, uh, Acta Christi is open and the SIF dictionaries are open. These are not open. So CCDC and ICCSD do not uh, permit uh, universal access and they don't permit universal reuse and perhaps in our five minutes we can tackle that. Um, Actacrist is a traditional closed uh, journal and so on so I want to make the clear, it's a very clear uh, borderline uh, down here which I hope that we can move things over to the left hand side. So we're in a European crystallographic meeting. This is the digital commissioner for uh, uh, Europe, uh, Nelly Crows, who's been incredibly active in pushing the open agenda uh, in Europe. And I think changing people's ideas. And Europe is fully committed uh, in Horizon 2020 to the idea of an era of open science uh, and uh, requiring open access and data resulting from EU-funded research. So, that is coming from Europe as well as just from the, U, uh, uh, the UK and, and so on. This is just to show why the current system is untenable. Three quick slides. At the moment, we publish in uh, PDF. We read it as humans, and the opportunity to close the circle uh, is missing. We close the system by making things semantic. Now, it's not easy to make things semantic, but it's not impossible. And when you do that, you end up with an evolving network whereby people publish things semantically, other people use them, contribute things back. And that is what is happening in that semantic web that I showed you people. And it's happening, uh, of course, in the biosciences. But the biosciences are linking up with um, uh, medicine, with government, with all sorts of things. And that is because it is so easy to do. And we are not doing that in uh, small molecule crystallography. Uh, so, Tim Berners-Lee came out with these ideas of five-star open data. 
make your stuff available on the web under an open license. That is the key thing, and that is why those things I showed were on the left-hand side or on the right side. Uh, the next, we actually, sorry, we actually do pretty well. Uh, we uh, make it available as structured data, and we use non-proprietary formats. Down here is where you start to build the semantic web. So you use RDF URIs to denote things, and people can link into you and use the same thing to link out. And uh, Crystal Eye, which I will show you shortly, fits all of those uh, categories there. Just to show a magnified bit of uh, this, and this is what we, uh, here's PDB, but you can see Uniprot, um, uh, PubChem, Omin is diseases, Kemble is chemistry, Keg is reactions, etc., etc. And we need to get uh, small molecule crystallography into uh, that there, and that's what I think the next slide shows. And I'm suggesting that we get two things into this. Uh, we get the SIF dictionaries into it, uh, and we get the uh, crystallography open database, and any other uh, set of fully open uh, crystallography. There's a huge demand for it. Uh, Kemble, which is here, uh, has asked me last week, how can we get crystal eye into uh, the semantic web of data? And I'm going to be working with them uh, on how we do that. How do we make semantic content? Well, uh, if you've got output from programs or databases, it's relatively straightforward. Uh, the only reason it doesn't happen is laziness, generally. Um, we're now, however, sorry, embarking on content mining and natural language processing because uh, people do not do the following up here, and this is the only way of getting it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about mining, but we're only mining because there is no alternative, not because it's the best way to do it. And hopefully it will only have a 10-year lifetime. So uh, here's uh, an example that we've built in Cambridge. Um, sorry. Uh, built by uh, Lizanne Howesey called uh, Chemical Tagger. Uh, and if we take a synthesis like that uh, and uh, we run it through the program, uh, the program will mark up everything in that. 100% of that is understood by a machine at some level, I'll debate what, uh, and you will see that it also pulls the uh, compounds out here. Uh, it's translated that name automatically into that and looked it up. It's translated it uh, and it understands all the numbers in here as well. So you can actually ask for a reaction which involves um, uh, parasubstituted phenols uh, in um, whatever it is, uh, anhydrous DMF, something of that sort. And that is a typical semantic query, whereas what was de uh, uh, deposited was not. Cambridge, uh, uh, sorry, the crystallography open database uh, from Zaulis. Zaulis, unfortunately, had to leave. Um, you will probably, uh, some of you will have met him, but uh, Armel Lebel uh, set this up uh, about 10 years ago gathered people around, and it is a purely bottom-up community activity with almost zero funding. It has, has some funding, uh, but it has collected a quarter of a million records, and those are all processed into semantic form, and they're freely available for the community. Simultaneously with this, one of my students, um, Nick Day, a uh, very smart guy, uh, spent a year of his PhD uh, building a system to trawl the whole of the literature, download SIFs, uh, and turn them into semantic chemistry. So Colin talked about uh, adding chemistry to crystallography. This is exactly what Nick Day did, um, and uh, in the next two or three slides, uh, I'll show you what it looks like. This is an example of uh, the... Uh, increase in publications uh, that he found, um, and these have not had any curation at all that I know of other than uh, going through CheckSIF or whatever, and possibly many of them didn't even do that. So they're simply published as supplemental data on the website, and point zero is if we could simply get all SIFs onto the journal pages, that would be a very, very valuable first step. But Elsevier, Wiley, and Springer, despite my requests, will not put SIFs up on their web page, uh, and other journals I haven't yet pursued. Um, typical example, we want to look for arsenic-chlorine bond lengths. Uh, this is an interactive diagram. It isn't here, but it is on the website. Uh, click on that, uh, and you find uh, ones with long bonds here. 
uh, five coordinates, uh, David would understand that, uh, and then uh, click on the short ones and you get arsenic uh, trichloride, right? So there are, as I say, 200,000 now, and we've also built a fragment thing from that uh, so that you can pull out fragments and use that for model building uh, or whatever. Um, and all of the software is open. Uh, it's create, this one's created by Jmol. Uh, this one's created by uh, CDK. And that layout has been done automatically, and it does a pretty good job of it. So coming to the last uh, two slides, uh, to remind you about the uh, COD. Um, COD, uh, what's happening now is... I and Zaulius are pooling resources. We're going to merge all the compounds we've got. We're going to merge the uh, crystallography to chemistry programs. We're going to, uh, we've got various NoSQL databases uh, which expose this. So we're going to create a completely free, open, reusable uh, tool for um, chemical crystallography where it occurs on open web pages or where it is uh, deposited by uh, people. And remember, this also covers inorganic as well as organic. So this is the only database to merge both organic and inorganic crystal structures uh, that I know. You saw the arsenic trichloride there. That was an inorganic structure. Um, CID wrote to uh, editors, urging them to deposit... The editors, I'm afraid, have not universally replied. In fact, most of them have universally not replied, as far as I understand. And this is a problem, and that is, I think, a, a concern if the general scholarly publication community does not take this uh, you know, with urgency. Because this is a perfectly reasonable request to ask authors to publish crystal structure data alongside their papers on the web pages. So... This is what I, if, if we've got five minutes, this is what I want us to talk about in the five minutes. Can we require open crystal data? I'm talking here, um, John, about small molecules, right? Uh, open crystal data for all publications. Dep de sorry, deposition of open data in C COD or anywhere else. Integrate the SIF dictionaries as RDF into the linked open data cloud integrate the COD into the linked open data cloud, and if CCDC and ICTSD are convinced of the value of this, to publish the raw author SIFs that they receive. Now, I understand the value that CCDC adds, and I'm, uh, I admire it, and, you know, it costs money. But what they get at the beginning is they get the raw SIFs from... Um, the authors, those are uh, part of the scientific record. They are the things that can be used for um, establishing whether the experiment was done properly, whether there was fraud, all of the things we've talked about, and they should be openly available, and at the moment, half of them are not. So. Thank you very much. 